Welcome to the fourth video in the Excel VBA Real Example Series. Things are getting exciting, I think. We've got a mechanism in the code that's gonna help us build this list of unique entries. That's gonna help us get Eric's task done. So let's get back into the download file. We've got this mechanism here. We can put an entry in cell D2, and then in cell D3, we've got this counted formula. That's gonna tell us, does the entry appear in this list that we're building. So what we've got to do is go through the data sheets. Remember, we've got four data sheets in the file. We've got to go through the data sheets and get each entry in column B, each name, onto the analysis sheet and into cell D2, into our mechanism. From there, we can check, is it in the list already? If it's not in the list already, we want to put it in the list. That's how things are going to come together. Don't worry if you don't understand it. Things will make sense as we go along. So with that said, let's get into the VBA editor. Now, a little aside here, a really important part of coding is testing. And I want to demonstrate this task exactly how I would do it. Now, I've come back to filming today. I'm starting a new filming session today with the fourth video. I wanted to just check again that everything was working. And to do that, I thought I'd test it a different way. And this is exactly what I did. I took this loop here. Now remember, this loop is looping through the cells, is looping through the cells in column B on the data sheets. I just wanted to check that that loop was accurate. And a quick way to do it was I effectively switched this loop off and then took just this code here that's uh, dynamically defining, selecting the range that we're going to work with. Took that code, copy pasted it after the message box, then full stop and address at the end there. Now this code, what's it going to do? You might want to stop the video and think about what it's going to do. But let's just see exactly what it does here. Control S, save the file. I'm just going to play the code now without putting an M in there. Let's delete that and reset the code. I'm just gonna play the code now, F5 key on the Windows PC. We can see we've got a message box, which is B2 to B41. Now, that's exactly what I want. You can see on the TX customer sheet, that is the data range for the names. Hitting enter, then we've got B2 to B29. Then we've got B2 to B39. And finally, we've got B2 to B40. So. It's actually working through each sheet and telling me the data range. So this final range, B2 to B40, that's the range on the MO customer sheet. That's the range that contains the data going down to the bottom there. We can see in B40, we've got our final uh, selection there. So just a quick test that I did. I did that for myself personally, but I thought, why not show it to people? Because this is how I would actually work through the task, always testing trying to test something in two different ways, do I get the same result that I'm reasonably happy with it. So I'm gonna switch this mechanism off now, and this line of code for the time being, uh, we can dispense with, we're happy that this loop is working through uh, column B on each sheet. So what do we wanna do? Well, the value in column B, the value in column B, we want to take that and put it into our mechanism. Okay, so the analysis sheet, cell D2, on the analysis sheet, and then we want to say, uh, yep, so sheets, analysis, the name of the sheet first, speech marks, brackets, and then what's the range? Well, we want to go into cell D2 here, cell D2, and then dot value, not absolutely necessary, but we'll include it for completeness, equals, now what do we want it to equal? Well, we know that we're looping through, we know that we're looping through the cells in column B on the data sheets. So we can very simply say, Chris cell, being careful about the spelling, Chris cell dot value. And that's, that's all we need. Now I just put an inverted comma in there, <clears throat> excuse me, I just put an inverted comma in there because I knew we'd get an error if I didn't complete the line of code there. So this is what we're looking at. <clears throat> what do we do once we do a new piece of code? Step through the code, does it work? Save the file first, Control S on the Windows PC. Stepping through the code now with the F8 key, what am I expecting to happen? Well, I'm expecting something to happen in this cell here, and you'll notice I've got the windows lined up so I can see the VBA editor and the spreadsheet at the same time. It's great to have two monitors. It's great to have two screens to do this. 
hitting the F8 key, I can see the value changed. Okay, that sounds okay. Let's keep going, expecting the value to change again. Okay, add some brand, that makes sense. Now we're on the third value, LC key. Okay, so the third value on the TX sheet, going to the TX sheet, should be LC key. So I'm happy with that. The loop mechanism we've got there uh, seems to be working. Okay, what else can we do? Well, let's just run the code and let's see if we get the last value in the file effectively. So I'm on the MO sheet now. So row 40. So if everything works, we would expect Stephanie to appear in that cell. So let's go back to the analysis sheet and just run the code this time. Control S, save the file, F5 on the Windows PC, or you can just hit the play button at the top. F5 is gonna run the whole routine. We get the visual effect of actually seeing Excel um, input all those, uh, all those values there. Let's do that one more time, hit the F5 key, and you can see Excel work through the values. And yes, this looks good. Stephanie Hall um, does appear, the final value in the file on the MO sheet, and she does appear in the cell here, cell D2. So I'm happy with that. Again, step by step, putting something in and testing it and seems to be working well. I'm gonna do one more test here. I'm gonna put Stephanie's name in our list, Control Alt V and V for values, pay special values. And then, yeah, I can see our mechanism is still working here. Okay, so again, a little bit more testing and seems to be working well. So we've got the names into onto the analysis sheet there into our mechanism now what else do we want to do well we're going to need something to allow us to say to excel if there's a value of one in cell d3 then we want to add the name to the list if there's a value of zero in cell d3 we don't want to add anything to the list so we're saying to excel if something is happening we want to do that if it's not happening we want to do this so what mechanism or what technique, VBA technique, do we need? You might want to stop the video and think about that. Well, of course, we're going to need a conditional statement to do this. Now, we do have a series on conditional statements for beginners. You can check that out. But yeah, we want to say to Excel, if the range in D, if the value rather in D3, just typing that in, equals one, then, I'm just going to, going to say message box, this value is in the list. You can just see that in your screenshot there. Because if there's a value of one here, the COUNTIF formula has counted that this value appears in the list once, then we know that this name is in the list, quite literally. So this will do the job. Okay. So let's just step through it and let's see what happens. So control S, save the file, F8 key, stepping through it. Okay, we've got the first value in there, Luna is in. And then what are we expecting to happen? Well, we have a value of one here. So we're expecting Excel to go to this line of code next. We're expecting it to work through the conditional statements. And there we have our message box. Okay, I'm gonna continue with the F8 key. We've got a new name in cell D2 now, a new name in D2. And we've got a value in D1. Okay, that seems to work. Right, so I'm going to put a val value in here. In fact, I'm going to go to the TX customer sheet and just change one of these names. I'm just going to put uh, an X on the end of that name there. Just change the name again, just for testing. Change the name and then what happens when we work through the routine? We're expecting something different to happen. This value is, this formula is going to return a value of zero. So we're expecting something different to happen. Control S, save the file. F8 key, working through the code. And then where are we going now? Well, I'm not expecting us to go to the message box to this part of the code here. I'm not expecting us to go there because we've got a value of zero in the cell now. Hitting the F8 key and we can see, yeah, we didn't go to that part of the code. So I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna switch the view so I'm on the other side here. Okay, but we want to extend this conditional statement further because, well, we might want to do something in case in both conditions. If one condition happens, we might want to do something. If the other condition happens, we might want to do something too. So what I'm going to do is introduce an if else statement here. If else and end if. 
this allows us to cater for two different eventualities, which we might want to do as we work through uh, this task. So if there's a one in the cell, then the value is in the list. If there isn't a one in the cell, then the value is not in the list. So I'm going to put not in uppercase there, just, to, just so I can see it. See it. So again, saving the file here. I'm going to rerun the code from the beginning, the F8 key. So the first value, remember I changed the first value so that it's not in the list. So you can see we're, we're going to go to this section of the conditional statement, hitting the F8 key. Now we're going to get our message box flashing up there. Okay, I'm happy with this mechanism. Seems to be working reasonably well, this mechanism. We put the conditional statement in there. We're getting through this task. You can see this is exactly how I do it in real life step by step, testing everything along the way, ideally testing things in more than one way. Does it get the same result? Testing something two different ways. And then we've got the magic of VBA working with uh, formulae to get things done. We just put a conditional statement in there. Now we can, t in the next video, we're gonna tell Excel what we want to do if the value is in the list, what we want to do if the value is not in the list. I'll see you in the next video.